Welcome to beautiful Ruskin, Florida, where the tomatoes are ripe and there's fun in the sun for everyone. <clears throat> Let's start over. Ruskin, Florida is a small town on the southeast shore of Tampa Bay that in many ways may seem unremarkable. Sure, we have a beach, and some of the finest tomatoes in the country really do grow here. We even have our very own 1950-style drive-in. Even so, a casual observer driving through Ruskin couldn't be blamed for thinking it's just another little town without a lot to offer. But they'd be wrong because tucked away by a little creek just behind busy Highway 41 sits a place that would make any community special. The Firehouse Cultural Center. I think the Firehouse is this jewel of South Shore. Beth Ann Steen is the marketing and programming coordinator for the Firehouse Cultural Center. I learned about the firehouse before I even moved to Florida. My parents moved to South Shore Falls, found this little gem, loved the music, loved what they offered. I came here uh, when I was 12, and I cried when I first saw Ruskin because all I could see was a two-lane road with no street lights, nothing, basically but tomato fields. Frances Herford is volunteer coordinator at the Firehouse Cultural Center. There was nothing to do here, so I was very unhappy, and obviously my father wouldn't let me live with the neighbors, so I had to come. After I was here a week or two, you could not have gotten me away from here. I absolutely ended up loving the lifestyle here, the fun that we had. We had a lot of tomato fights in the fields, and uh, Everything was just kind of, uh, you learn to make do to do things. I remember this when they had a wooden shed here. The whole um, process of developing the Firehouse Cultural Center started in 2004, 2005. Sandy Council is the president of the Ruskin Community Development Foundation. The Ruskin Community Development Foundation, RCDF, requested that when the county was ready to vacate Station 17, that they notify us and that we pull together a, a group to decide what amenity we could turn this into. In other words, repurpose this old, old building. And we pulled together a, a committee group. There were 23 people on the original committee. We started working our first official tour of the Firehouse Cultural Center, which was station number 17 at the time, was in July of 2010. The original uh, conversation that I recall was being invited into a community group to talk about what could possibly be a purpose or an organizing concept for the old fire station that was uh, becoming available to a nonprofit who could have a concept for developing something that the community, the whole community, could really use. Dolores Coe is an artist and educator who serves as curator of art and health at the University of South Florida. The conversation, as I remember it, was really open. It wasn't, uh, we went into it, uh, some of us, with the idea of uh, a, an art center or a place that could provide these kinds of things. But there were other people in the community that were part of the discussion uh, that, that saw it in, in uh, other terms, as an environmental center, as a training center. There were all of these ideas. All of those things got heard. And as, as the focus became an art center, we're able to kind of consolidate the, the concept and build on the concept so that it included elements of all of those different ideas. So the idea that to have community events, the idea that it could be an education center, that it could be an art center, was all part of it. We, we with some other people, started a, a big draw event in 2008, and we did it in 2009, 
And it was a month-long art event in which uh, we had people teaching drawing and painting and photography and all sorts of things. We had a great turnout and thought that this community could really use an, a fine arts center. Bruce Marsh is an artist and educator who taught painting and drawing at the University of South Florida for nearly 40 years. Uh, it happened because primarily uh, through Sandy Council, who's been extremely active over the years, having connections with the county and knowing uh, uh, one of the county people that was in development, and she had talked to him and planted the idea that, that the firehouse should be given to this community. Well, in 2006, the Arts Council did a community cultural plan and we had town hall meetings all over Hillsborough County. And it became obvious from those two meetings that people in this area wanted something closer than Tampa that they could go to to have cultural experiences. Art Keeble is a former director of the Arts Council of Hillsborough County. And it was shortly thereafter that I met Sandy Council, Bruce Marsh, and Dolores Coe and Nina Tatlock, uh, who were passionate to have a cultural center in this area. When I came on the uh, Hillsborough County Commission in 2010, um, I have known a lot of the individuals in this community for a long time. Sandy Merman is County Commissioner for Hillsborough County's District 1, which encompasses the South Shore area. I knew a lot of the players. I knew there was an organization. Uh, they really didn't have anywhere to go um, to really do their programs and all that. And I think they came to me. They were t talking about, you know, raising money for a new facility. And then I knew that we had this fire station that we were had retired at the county. And I just one day, let's make this into. Um, Firehouse Cultural Center. Without the support of Hillsborough County, Commissioner Merman, the Community Foundation of Tampa Bay, coming together and seeing the importance of, of this resource could be to the community, we would not have gotten the initial funding that we, we got and the support that we got to make this happen. I think Ruskin is one of the most beautiful little towns that we have in Hillsborough County. And we just need to give it some help. And I thought the Firehouse Cultural Center um, was a perfect way to do that. We are the only cultural facility in South Hillsborough County. Chris Bredbenner is the executive director of the Firehouse Cultural Center. Serving all of our community. And we provide access to all sorts of cultural arts visual arts, performing arts, music, all sorts of children's programming, adult programming. Having the ability to be in your hometown, whether that be the surrounding areas of Sun City or Apollo Beach or Riverview. Uh, we have a broad reach in South County, Waimama. And so we provide the, uh, the opportunity to see great, great activities and not have to travel uh, to the major areas outside of our area. Our summer camps are wonderful, full spectrum. Everything from musical theater to cartooning and animation to robotics. So every week is its own camp. It has its own rich flavor to itself. It's a great way to diversify for the kids because of our scholarships. We have kids who have never held a paintbrush to kids who really show artistic talent and they merge together, create projects that are just wonderful. And then there's this great show off at the end of the week for their adults. I get so involved with watching them blossom. It's just so much fun. The one thing that has really taken off that really kind of surprised us was the pubs. It originally was going to be like cabaret shows and things like that. Well, people, the community has really gravitated to that. There's really nothing on this end of, of Hillsborough County that offers that type of programming, where people can really get up close and personal 
to the entertainers and interact with them the way they do here at the pub. So I'm very proud of that program too. In 2013, a friend of mine um, was a jazz promoter and was providing uh, jazz performances about once a month here at the firehouse. And I started coming with my wife uh, to visit with my friend and to hear good jazz. Joe Hervey is the musical director at the Firehouse Cultural Center. My friend died unexpectedly, and at the time that he died, he had committed to several performances at the Firehouse. But I thought I could fill those dates because I knew musicians. Um, and it occurred so easily for me, I then suggested to her that I would continue to do that if she would allow me to expand the music program beyond what it was at that time, which has included Latin jazz, uh, California jazz, uh, we've had jazz from New York, we've had New Orleans jazz, we've had jazz from just about every genre here. But additionally, we've done bluegrass, country, folk, we've done a lot of different kinds of music here. Uh, and tried to see what the community was interested in and what they reacted to, and then we would book those, those groups again. When we took the tour, the first tour the county gave us of the building, we realized that there were two outbuildings and there was a large radio tower. Well, that belonged to the sheriff's department. So we went to the sheriff's department and asked them what they were going to do. And they said, well, we were just going to tear them down. And we said, oh, no, what? please don't do that. We would like to explore the possibilities of a community radio station. And they, they were fine with that. And it just turned out that uh, there was a, a group called Prometheus Radio that was lobbying Congress to have the Federal Communication Commission open up a window to allow applicants for community radio stations. That passed, and so, so we started the process, the application process in 2013. And so here we are today, we have a full-fledged radio station, 101.9, and it's um, your community radio station. And we are really excited about the fact that now we have an official studio, a production studio, in the facility across the street for the firehouse. But the Firehouse Cultural Center owns the license and is what's so neatly different. It's the only cultural center, to our knowledge, that owns a community radio station. Well, I grew up in Ruskin, and um, I learned about the Firehouse Cultural Center through uh, friends. Uh, some friends told me that th there was a cultural center there and um, that it had to do with the arts and and uh, it was something that surprised me so I went to go and investigate <laughs> see what was going on. Joe Zuniga is an award-winning Latin recording artist, author, and the owner of Zuniga Marketing Incorporated. And I got introduced to Miss Sandy Council which invited me into the radio station uh, that is part of the Firehouse Cultural Center. And, uh, and that's how I got involved uh, with what's going on there. The Firehouse Cultural Center is pretty important to me personally because uh, it's, it's a tool that can be used in the community, um, especially to my community, which is the Hispanic community. Uh, they provide an, a, a door, a, a gateway, in other words, uh, for our arts to be presented as well. And it's something that our community has never had the opportunity to enjoy uh, here or really anywhere in the state of Florida, I think. And, um, and I've partnered up with the Firehouse myself and created a couple of programs where we brought in um, Latino performances, uh, spoken word, uh, dance, uh, Latino dance. Um, and it's something that was, uh, it was, it was amazing. It was a great show that, that's been provided to the community and the community responded, they, su they supported it a lot. I think the radio station has done a very good job, has dedicated a specific time slot to Hispanic programming and offers some of that in Spanish itself. Art and music especially seem to bring everyone together. It's a universal language 
So I think that's where the Firehouse Cultural Center has a specific um, goal and a, a, specific, a specific purpose is to engage that Hispanic community more. We partner with a lot of great organizations, the STRAS, Tampa Museum of Art, HB Plant Museum, uh, the, the Arts Councils, the Florida Division of, of Cultural Affairs, and the Hillsborough County Arts Council. And that allows us to provide quality programming at very, very, very reasonable either program fees or in some many cases for no cost. The Strass Center is a large performing arts center in downtown Tampa. Uh, our programs include uh, opera, symphony, Broadway, and a number of other uh, music type performances, comedy performances, all the popular fare that's available out there to present in a live performance. Lauren Shepard is the Chief Operating Officer at the Strass Center for the Performing Arts and serves on the Board of Directors at the Firehouse Cultural Center. Uh, we were opened in 1987 and in that in the time between then and now, we've expanded with a conservatory where we teach the performing arts. And it's that uh, component, the conservatory, that has partnered with uh, the Firehouse Cultural Center. So that's where, that's how we connect. The Strass Center is among the top 10 performing arts centers in the nation. That includes the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., the Lincoln Center in New York City, in the LA Music Center in, in um, Los Angeles. Uh, and um, we really enjoy a national reputation, but our commitments are all to the local uh, audience. There are a number of things uh, taking place and have been uh, over the years with regards to arts education. And you find that there less there's less of that in the school systems and some somehow that has to find its way into a community and the firehouse cultural center along with many other sort of regional cultural centers around the uh, five county area have done a great job fulfilling that mission the Strass center is connected to the Firehouse Cultural Center uh, in as much as the Firehouse Cultural Center is one of 52 partners the Strass Center has. And we firmly believe that arts and arts education should take place regionally as opposed to in just in the major, major cities, if you will, the major urban areas. I'm a bit of a, I feel like a bit of an evangelist or a missionary about the arts and really feeling like they have, can have a terrific impact on the quality of life and that, uh, and that was something that would uh, just be a, a really satisfying to see an art center established here and functioning. And so it's really been, it feels like a miracle that it's happened and, and uh, uh, it's up and running and it's, it's uh, been extremely successful. I think that a cultural center brings to a community another aspect that is not present otherwise. In other words, especially to school-aged children, because arts and cultural programs are cut back, first cutbacks in budgets, which and the accessibility to arts and cultural facilities is usually a long distance for most people. Our county is one of the largest counties geographically in the state of Florida. So it, 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 driving a great distance is just not feasible for a lot of people. So we're, we brought it to the people, basically, is what we did. We brought arts and cultural to the people of South County. And I think that's, that's really important. I was very aware as an educator and an artist, as were other people that were involved in this project, that if you lived in North Tampa or you lived in other places of our area, kids and young people um, have, have certain opportunities that just simply weren't here. If you talk with artists and musicians and theater people, somewhere along the line, um, the opportunity came up, and usually as a young person, maybe with a mentor in a community, something that was unique, that provide that open door to you and that, uh, that place to bounce off of and, and grow and go on to, whether you do it professionally or not. 
And um, that's, uh, that's what happened to me, and that's what's happened to a lot of people. And uh, I think it's probably under, it's like, where did your secret garden come from? And it wouldn't be there unless other people had provided the opportunity. The onset of COVID-19 has been a tremendous impact. We all know that. Uh, organizations, government, healthcare, the Firehouse Cultural Center is not immune from that. So we have been impacted greatly, both financially, our revenue streams have been reduced, uh, contributions, membership, uh, and many things that, that drive us to be able to offer these programs are not there for us. We dug in, we are here, and we're surviving. A lot of the changes that we had to make are actually moment by moment, day by day, week by week. So we've learned to be very agile. COVID-19 set us back. We are, our, our attendance has really dropped dramatically. As I write grants and you look at those numbers, that translates into less people that we've touched. We're in the business of bringing people together. So we, we have adjusted, we have made some strategic moves from a standpoint of how do we safely operate, and then we have also looked at how do we reinvent some of our programs. Well, the pandemic has put us at, put me personally in mother bear mode where we have to safeguard not only ourselves so that we can stay open, but anybody that walks through those doors, and especially for summer camp. Had we not taken some of the steps that we did, we would not have had summer camp this year. The, not only the laser thermometers, cleaning equipment, hand sanitizers, getting our volunteers to be on board with, no one enters the building without temp check, without hand sanitation, um, masks are available. So it's just allowed us to have to micro think who is going to handle these paintbrushes? Who is going to handle these scissors? Do we bag them up for each child and make kits? Do we allow communal and continue cleaning? It has made us micro think every hour of every day for every event, for every camp, uh, for anything that goes into this building as well as our studio space. The way a virus manifests is it's not discriminatory. So it manifests for the Firehouse Cultural Center similarly to the way it manifests at the Strass Center, but the scales are different. And the unfortunate component to that is that a larger institution almost definitively has more access to relief and funding than a smaller one does. And I would say that's probably one of the biggest distinctions. Chris Bredbender, the executive director of the Firehouse Culture Center, is doing a fantastic job securing funds and keeping things going. How long that'll last is up in the air. And there is a need to, to, to find new avenues of funding to keep the Firehouse Cultural Center going so that when this is all over, it'll still be here for the community and the families that it's been serving for so many years. The pandemic has had a, a very significant and severe impact on the live music program. We virtually shut down other than one or two trials that we've done. Um, and, and that has caused, I think, local people who, who were used to coming to live music to not be able to experience that because every place else also shut down live music. Um, it's been, it's been devastating, not only for the firehouse as, a, as an organization, but also for many of the, the people that depended in part on the firehouse to give them a place to perform uh, as musicians. Uh, 
that's been very tough on, on a lot of my friends that, that are in the music business. In, in this time, a, a, lot of, a, a lot is fragile. And if, uh, if the momentum of this place and what has been invested here is lost, it's, it's, really, losing, uh, it's really losing opportunity for people that, um, that for which it, it really is a touchstone for their future. It's, um, it's losing a, a place that builds community. It's, it's uh, losing a place where people can try things on and learn things about themselves. And I would say that, it, that this is a time, maybe more than ever, that people really need those kinds of, these kinds of vehicles. And I, I think um, part of what I've been involved in for, for a very long time has also been the, the use of arts for, for other purposes than being an artist. So what can it do for mental health? What can it do for, um, for uh, people who are estranged from community because of, of their health, because of their economic um, experiences, uh, and, and because they, they simply can't get out or connect with other people. And the arts have always been a connector. I can't think of a more important reason to be in existence as a cultural center than at the time of crisis like this. People need an escape. People need to smile. They need to sing. They need to dance. Um, I have been quarantined at home for several months now. Being retired, that hasn't been so bad. Um, but I can imagine if I had family and we were accustomed to doing a lot of activities, it would be devastating. The Firehouse Cultural Center isn't essential as the definition of essential has become in the COVID-19 pandemic era. But we are critical. We're critical to the community because as we emerge, people use arts for healing. People use arts for learning and laughing and exploring. People use arts to find out things about themselves that they never knew, to reach out and try something and spread their wings. So while we may not be deemed essential, we certainly are a big part of what the emerging process from a difficult time is going to be for everyone. It's like a menu of things that can be that can be done to help. In this time, uh, it's really tough, uh, and, and there's so much need. So I think to to uh, build alliances. To, is there something that you can uh, do at the firehouse? Is there something your organization or your corporation can partner in? Is there uh, a, a program that could be sponsored? Is there a scholarship that would allow a kid to do something? there. Um, there's so many ways and of course you can volunteer. That. Number one, I'd recommend a membership to show support through a membership. To um, offer to volunteer if there's any volunteer opportunities. To, to support it any way they could. I mean a five dollar donation is, is support. Um, just talking about it in the community. Encouraging other people to become members. There's a wide range of ways to support the Firehouse Cultural Center. We have a number of donors who support us financially, either through their foundations, through their personal giving, uh, through gifts of, from their company or matching gifts. We have a number of folks that support us through our memberships. We have a very good membership program and recurring membership, sustaining donors, committing to a monthly giving program. We also have volunteers who faithfully come and help us put on our programs. So there's, there's ways to connect to the Firehouse Cultural Center however you may be able to. Also, offering up any opportunities or advice that you have, my door is always open, the phone is on. I love for people to reach out and say, how can I help? So if you have an idea, please give us a call and I'll find a way that you can help us. The one thing that we all hang our hats on is that this will be over. And the 
driving factor for us, the, the, the thing that keeps us working so hard to survive this condition is the vision of what life will be like when it is over and how glorious that will be to have people congregate again in live, you know, to witness while live performance or, or instruction. So that's what keeps us going and I'm confident that uh, we will get there and uh, it's gonna be amazing when we, when we reopen the doors fully.